So before I go for the bond effective charge, I would, would like to talk about some ionic material properties. As we know, in ionic material, there is positive charge as well as negative charges are there. And uh, they may be distributed like octahedral or tetrahedral or whatever. But if we apply some electric field, it may be externally or it may be local electric field uh, for ferroelectric material or it may be uh, external, so whatever. So if we apply this electric field, then this uh, positive ion and negative ion will experience some forces. And this force is, of course, is related to the electric field uh, multiplied with the electronic charge. And this positive charge and negative charge will experience in the opposite direction. And since this force is applied over here, uh, this charge distribution will be displaced or distorted. So this uh, charge will not be static, not the point charge. After the distortion, they, 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 in these charges, there will be some differences due to this polarization or displacement. So these charges, that Q is not more uh, static. This is actually dynamical charge. And these charges are called as the bond effective charge, and which is uh, named after the max bond. Now, uh, using this, uh, due to this, displacement of these charges, actually there will be some polarization. Displacement of charge is actually related to polarization and this polarization actually define the ferroelectricity. If there is continuous polarization, spontaneous polarization, then there will be ferroelectricity. If there is no spontaneous polarization, then there will be paraelectricity. And this ferroelectricity and paraelectricity, this defined or dictated by this temperature. If temperature decreases, then there will be going to polarization will be high, and this will be the ferroelectricity, uh, ferroelectric portion, and this will be the paraelectric portion. So as I said, the ferroelectricity is defined by the spontaneous polarization, and this spontaneous polarization is related to the bond effective charge. But how it is related to bond effective charge, I will discuss in the next slide. But before this, I would like to say why we should calculate this bond effective charge. So using, after calculating this bond effective charge, we can study about ferroelectric polarization and lattice vibration in ionic insulator. And also we can study about piezoelectric, flexoelectric, and we can study about optical spectra in IR resin. So now uh, let me talk about the polarization. Which polarization will be related to the bond effective charge? So to uh, to discuss about the bond uh, polarization, so let us consider the uh, one 1D chain of ions where positive and negative ions are situated like this. And if there is a, some change, displacement of the ions, then there will be, if this displacement is delta, then the polarization is defined as that given by charge into displacement, that is dipole moment, and divided by the volume. This is actually the polarization, but this is in the real, uh, ideal case, but in the real case, so as I said, this charge is uh, one electronic charge because it is point charge and the displacement by volume, but this is in uh, ideal case, but in case of real case, in case of real material, if this is some ion and this is new, uh, sorry, this is atom and this is uh, uh, nucleus and this is electronic distribution in the real material. If this is centrosymmetric, centrosymmetric uh, means that this uh, the electronic charge is uh, situated uh, same uh, with respect to the uh, nucleus in the both side. But if there is some displacement of this cation towards this uh, negative ion, then this uh, then this electronic charge distribution will be attracted towards the uh, cation and there will be some displacement as well as some dis di uh, distortion in this negative charge. So this, this difference, this difference uh, will be uh, greater than the delta. This difference is called delta dash and this delta dash, as I said, this is polarization is given by the uh, electronic charge for this cation. This is point charge and this is one electronic charge into that particular displacement uh, by the volume. And we can say that if, if we consider with the previous displacement delta, then we can call that this charge has become increased due to this dis uh, distortion of electronic charge. So this is obviously greater than the 
uh, the previous polarization as in the ideal case. So we can say that this is get, uh, this uh, bond effective charge that is uh, jet charge is greater than the uh, real real uh, charge. So this bond effective charge is given by this formula that is uh, polarization uh, change uh, over the uh, change in the displacement and this is the unit volume and this is the electronic charge and this u is the displacement periodic displacement and in case of 3d in case of 3d material uh, actually uh, we can if we displace this uh, ion into the j direction then there will be some uh, polarization upwards in the x direction so i direction whatever if we displace in the x direction then there will be change in the y direction or z direction so this is actually tensor this uh, so this is uh, displacement in the j direction and polarization uh, upwards in the r direction. So using this uh, uh, formula, we can uh, define this polarization like this. If we calculate uh, polarization, we can easily get the knowledge about the uh, bond effective charge. So how do we calculate this polarization? So uh, as I said, this uh, bond effective charge is uh, not only the point charge, this is all, this is uh, combined of point charge as well as the some other electronic charge distribution. So this is the combination. And uh, in the PRL, uh, you can say they see this PRL paper, they have uh, given uh, bond effective charge for the Prevoskite material. We know that in oxygen, oxygen the formal charge is minus two, but they have calculated the bond effective charge and they got charges like this in the red faded area. You can see this is almost five, six or seven minus. So it's uh, not formal charge minus two and it is greater than minus two like 200% or 300%. So bond effective charge is very significant over here. So how do we calculate this bond effective charge using PFT? So to calculate this, we actually consider a parameter that is called lambda and we change this lambda from zero to one. And this zero is represent the paraelectricity and one is represent the ferroelectricity or whatever you can say zero is for uh, the no polarization and one is for the highest polarization. So this is actually the lambda. And after considering this lambda, we actually consider a uh, sum potential to, uh, to uh, to calculate this uh, uh, polarization change and this is the formula using this we will calculate the change of polarization in the alpha direction alpha is just a cartesian coordinate uh, over the uh, due to the change of lambda and this is the formula and f is nothing but the uh, occupation number of state in the balance band and h is the uh, plan constant q electronic charge m is the electronic mass and number of unit cell is n and the uh, omega is the um, volume of unit cell and m is the n, n is the number of uh, occupied state and m is the unoccupied state and we are using the momentum operator and this is the constant potential and we are using this formula and we also use uh, uh, the wave function and we change this wave function to a periodic wave function later i will show it so after that after get this formula uh, resta another uh, theorist who proposed that we can calculate the polarization per unit volume using this 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 formula and which is uh, which is integrated over the all possible values of the uh, lambda from 0 to 1 so and now we change this uh, wave function to the uh, periodic wave function like this. This is the periodic wave function and this is depend on the theta angle and this angle is uh, um, this periodicity is uh, over the uh, that, uh, real lattice parameter also and using this two formula we, if we place uh, this uh, into this formula and we will get a very phase formula like this. So this is our reduced formula and we have to do for this, we have to do some kind of quantum calculations and uh, we, we got this uh, polarization formula and this is actually change in very fetch. This is over the data zone 
boundary and this is actually the formula we got uh, from this uh, from, from this uh, bone sum potential and this very fast formula and if we this is how we got uh, change in polarization per unit volume uh, from dft and after getting this uh, polarization value we can relate to this polarization value to the bone effective charge and that is how we, we got this bone effective charge so let me show you a paper from an indian group so this is they have shown here sorry Sorry, they have shown here that uh, this is a ferroelectric material that is bismuth titanate and they have shown that displacement in the direction of x axis and this displacement for the different ion uh, that is bismuth titanate and oxygen this uh, this ion displaced uh, not uh, not same they, the, the displacement is uh, changes so different atom uh, different ions uh, displacement is different so after getting this displacement idea uh, due to this displacement we will get some polarization and due to this polarization we will get this bond effective charge here they have calculated the uh, polarization for different direction using the gg approximation or ld approximation and this b1 a1 is for the ferroelectricity and uh, this uh, i for t volume is for the paralytic and they have calculated this uh, polarization for different direction and from this is a polarization they have calculated also the bond effective charge in the different direction so this is as i said this is a tensor and for they have calculated for the uh, every 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 ion so this is how we can get the polarization as well as bond effective charge from the tft